Hey folks, uh, so this video uh, has spent the best part of a month in the making. Today I'm going to be talking about PeerTube, the open source federated video sharing platform. Uh, but just before I crack on with that, uh, I do uh, want you guys to hang around to the end of the video. Um, I'm going to be talking a little bit more about the Steam Play where you know you can play uh, Windows games on Linux through Steam. It's a new feature that Steam are and Valve are rolling out. It's really quite good. I don't have anything in the way of official news, but I have tested a few games and I thought I might share my thoughts on that. But before that, let's talk about PeerTube. Now, there are a few people I would actually like to thank about PeerTube right off of the bat. Uh, the first is the curator at Mastodon.art account. Uh, they are basically running the uh, ShareTube um, PeerTube instance, uh, and they were incredibly welcoming. So thank you very much if you happen to be watching this video. Um, and I have had nothing but joy with this platform, uh, ShareTube and PeerTube. It's it, It's been an absolute wonder to work on. And the second person uh, that I would like to thank is Chris Talaris, who was effectively the straw that broke the camel's back on this one. A lot of you guys had been requesting that I make a PeerTube account for quite some time. I think Chris was the one that finally pushed me over the edge. So, uh, yeah, he's to uh, he's to blame for that one. So anyway, um, basically, oh, and they're worth checking out on the uh, on the Fediverse as well. So if I can remember, remember, I'll try and put their links down in the comment uh, in the description below. Anyway, PeerTube, right? Uh, I got to say, when I was planning out this video this morning, I was a little bit um, at a loss because really, what can I say about it other than uh, that I've actually had a great deal of fun working with it, enjoying it. It does a, quite a few things better than uh, than YouTube, although I don't think that it should necessarily be compared to YouTube. YouTube, it's really good, and I think you should all try it out. End of video. Um, yeah, so effectively, uh, how it works is uh, a group of people or a person would uh, install PeerTube to their server, and then them and whoever they want can then sort of upload videos to it. And the idea is that you have lots of these little PeerTube installations on lots of different servers that all interconnect to one big network. So that is the idea that it, uh, of, of its scalability, how it scales. So uh, one of the big problems with all of these, um, you know, up and coming video platforms is is bandwidth and disk space, which admittedly, for the most part, aren't too expensive. But then when you supercharge it into a video sharing platform, you kind of need something, you know, you, you need a, you need a lot more clout in that regard. Now, uh, PeerTube also uses uh, the web BitTorrent um, technology to uh, spread some of the uh, the work around in regards to bandwidth as well. So uh, when you're stream uh, when you're watching a video, you're also seeding it to other people who happen to be watching it. So that's pretty good. So when a lot of people start watching a video, when a video goes viral on PeerTube, um, the peer to peer should be able to stop it from uh, overloading the servers, which is really good because then it means that people who don't have huge amounts of money can host PeerTube instances. Uh, without having to worry about their videos going down if, if one of them happens to go viral. That's a really good forethought, and it's something that a lot of other video platforms don't have. A lot of video platforms, if they were as successful as they wanted to be, would collapse under their own weight. Um, however, I don't necessarily, you know, like, it's very easy to compare these video sharing platforms to YouTube, but YouTube isn't really, if uh, at heart, a, a video sharing platform. It's a search engine that uh, has a video sharing platform beneath it. I know that sounds a little bit strange and counterintuitive, but the reason YouTube is successful is not because you can upload an unlimited number of videos to it. Uh, I could build my channel just as happily across on PeerTube. Okay, so I might need to, uh, you know, drop it down a resolution in order to, to to fit everything onto a disc. So a lot of these videos are 720 as opposed to 1080. But who really cares? My videos aren't high fidelity, and I kind of want to be uh, a good citizen on the server as well. And off uh, off that particular point, it actually. Uh, having things like so uh, with PeerTube, the PeerTube admin can set an upload limit of for file sizes, obviously to preserve the integrity of their server in that regard. But it's up to the instance admin as to, to what that's set at. That's really good because it actually teaches you to be respectful of disk space again. Like with YouTube, you kind of take it for granted that you can just upload and upload and upload and upload, and you get a lot of junk as a result of that. With PeerTube, it forces you to be a little bit more thoughtful about what you uh, what you post because it's coming out of a quota, and that is something that I actually kind of like. It's a little bit like the Aleppo Social um, Mastodon account, which is a Mastodon account where you're not allowed to use the letter E. You're also not allowed to substitute it with something else either. Uh, the exception is with URLs. If you copy and paste a URL, 
they let you use the letter E for obvious reasons. But, um, and it's, it's a really good platform because one of the side effects of not being able to use the letter E is that you have to think long and hard about every sentence you're going to write. And if you're just spitting out some junk, well, you're not going to do that if it requires a significant amount of labor to do so. So every tweet crafted on that instance has had several minutes of work behind it at least. And therefore, you kind of get a higher quality of interaction, which is kind of fun. Obviously, the novelty takes over, but it's just an interesting social experiment that, you know, doesn't involve getting arrested like many other YouTubers here. Anyway, uh, I'm uh, off point, but, you know, rambly video. Uh, my original point was that YouTube is predominant, predominantly a search engine. And it kind of went that way when Google bought it out. Google are like, re they're really good at that search because of, of course, all that data they keep gathering. And with YouTube, that kind of carries across. And it's the discoverability that YouTube provides to creators that actually keeps them on the platform. It's not, the, uh, it's not necessarily any of the technical aspects. Yes, the technical side of YouTube is very good, very impressive, very superior to any other video sharing platform, I believe. Although I suppose you can you can do um, HD. I don't I don't know if you can do 4K on um, on on PeerTube. I've not tested it. You can do 60 frames per second and all that kind of stuff. So PeerTube, in regards to actually presenting a video, can do it just as well as YouTube as well. It's also fast. It loads up videos uh, pretty quickly as well. So if I went to say my stunt rally video, look at that. Loads up in in a couple of uh, faster than YouTube. There we go. So um, and then I can just pop back to my public profile there. So yeah, that's pretty fast as well. That's pretty good. So um, but yeah, it's all about the discoverability on YouTube. I I could build this channel on I could build it on PeerTube. I could build it on Dailymotion. I could build it on what used to be VidMe or anything else, even on something like Twitch, you know, with the VODs. You know, you can build a channel in a, in a lot more places than just YouTube. But getting your videos watched, hmm, that's the thing. So how are you going to get your videos watched on PeerTube? How have they solved that problem? Well, They've solved that problem incredibly elegantly using the Fediverse and using ActivityPub. Now, many of you may not know what ActivityPub is. It's a new protocol which has been adopted by the W3C that um, kind of facilitates the Mastodon Fediverse um, and, and all of the other pieces of software that link into it. Like, for example, um, I think it's like PixelFed, the sort of the Instagram uh, one as well. So there, yeah, there are quite a few pieces of software actually working at play in the Fediverse now, which is really quite interesting. It's not reliant on just Mastodon, although Mastodon is the biggest player. PeerTube are coming in, and and uh, you know all, all, all other kind of, of manner of, uh, of pieces of software are coming in, which is pretty good. There's even uh, I've seen on the uh, on the Federated Timeline talk of a calendar app that works within the uh, you know a calendar and events and a sharing kind of app, which is coming in through the uh, the ActivityPub infrastructure. So that's really Really quite exciting there. But how does PeerTube fit into all of this peer-to-peer um, -peer sort of uh, federated network kind of stuff? Well, if you wanted to subscribe to my videos here on PeerTube, right now the easiest way to do it is to go to your Mastodon or whatever account, go to the search bar there, type in just Chris Swear will do, and then you'll be presented with these two accounts, or at least it is on Linux Rocks where I am. One of them is going to be just my regular old um, Linux Rocks account, and below it is going to be my Chrisware at ShareTube account. So all you've got to do is just remember Chrisware or at Chrisware at ShareTube, and then you just follow me like that. There you go, you're subscribed. It's uh, really quite cool that way. So um, the big challenge now, I guess, for PeerTube is just managing to occupy uh, all of the uh, the network with with content and trying to get people bring it uh, to bring it on. It's actually in a really healthy state as well because they did a big fundraiser for it, and not only did they meet that fundraiser, but they meet that met their first stretch goal, which was a significant stretch goal as well. So it's not just uh, it's not just loose change that they're working with here. So even though PeerTube is in beta at the moment, um, it's a very good beta. And, um, and I'm incredibly uh, excited and looking forward to seeing what uh, what comes of it. One of the things also I do quite like about it as well is that you actually have an account, but then you have different channels on your account. It's similar to how you can have multi-channel accounts on YouTube, but it is just so much more easier to navigate and, and speed through. Another thing I like about it, it's just a faster website. Have you noticed how freaking slow YouTube is these days? It is incredibly frustrating. It, it, it is. Oh my word, it is just embarrassing for them. They had a faster loading website and they switched. I don't know, I don't know, man. They seem like, like, like every other day, it seems that YouTube just takes a big old punch in its own face, doesn't it? <laughs> it could be so much better if they just sort of had like some sort of, I don't know, coherent plan or something, but it doesn't. It seems like they're just picking up after every kind of mess that they end up finding themselves in. It's ridiculous. 
Now, there are some different dynamics with Peertube as well, which is quite interesting because you've appeared, uh, the Peertube uh, network and the Fediverse, it's made up of you know lots of small communities here. There is a little bit of, um, you want to choose the right Peertube instance, and that's going to be incredibly important. There are going to be people that run Peertube instances that they want to keep family friendly, for example. There are going to be Peertube instances that don't allow, or that, that might lean in a political direction one way or another that you, you know, uh, that, that, that might um, possibly you know want to affect where you post. There might be uh, peer tube uh, peer tube uh, installations that um, you know that, that that have other content on it that you might not necessarily want to be associated with, and all that kind of stuff. So I got to say, ShareTube is is definitely a place that I feel comfortable calling home as well. Uh, there is another good. Um, there are actually quite a few good accounts. In fact, if I go to the trending page here, you can sort of see where some of the others link in. So as you can see, Blender is by far the most popular account in the uh, in the little network on ShareTube, ShareTube at the moment. A lot of that is because, of course, Blender were um, having issues with YouTube because Blender don't want to monetize their videos and YouTube do want to monetize their videos and that, that caused problems but you can see there's should I ditch Twitter there's the uh, the yes Jupiter Broadcasting they put their videos up on Peertube uh, they do getjupiter.com that's their instance uh, so you've got Ask Noah Show Linux Action News there um, what other instance there is also a, a Linux Rocks uh, Peertube instance which I believe is peertube.linuxrocks.online and I did consider I, I I would have gone on to that um, instance as well, but uh, ShareTube snapped me up first. So there we go. But there's enough room for everyone so far. And um, and I yes, I mean I've got to say this is this is fantastic. Um, uh, my videos aren't really going to be getting the same kind of viewership that they would be on YouTube. But again, that's the thing about YouTube is that it is just such a um, it, 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 it is the discoverability of YouTube that makes it so successful. That's its core. And that's why people are reluctant to move away from it. And that's why people keep taking the punishment that YouTube hands out is because it's just that um, it, the discoverability is what is, is also in a case in a lot of cases, specifically with channels that, that have a budget and need to, uh, you know, need to support themselves financially. Um, yeah, you sort of kind of feel you, you get yourself locked into YouTube because discoverability is is you know that it can make or break you so there we go um so i think that's about it also as well let's go to local a second uh xdsl he's also on peertube so um he's you know you'll uh, you want to follow him he does good videos but i'm sure many of you guys who are subscribed to me are also familiar with xdsl he's also kicking around on youtube if you feel like subscribing to him there as well um but yeah Peertube, absolutely love it. It's uh, it's a jolly old time, and it's nice. And all you know, like another bonus that just, just sort of came to me right now, of course, is if something goes wrong with YouTube, what the hell do you do? Do you just sort of beg and plead in the uh, in those forums or whatever? Do you you know is there a support channel that you can talk to YouTube? Is there fuck with Peertube? You generally know the person who is the admin of that instance. So if there are problems, you can at least talk it out like you know grown up adults. So. Isn't that one? That's really quite quite beneficial. If I post something which um, you know which is is deemed inappropriate or uh, a crossing or approaching the line, then yeah, the administrator of my instance can say, Chris, can you take that video down or can you roll it back a bit? It's not like one day I'm going to wake up and find that my account is going to be shut down or it's going to be, you know, one video has been just like taken off because it just doesn't fit the uh, the values of someone else. I mean, admittedly, if you go to a, a, a crummy peer tube server where people don't respect other people's uh, art and all that kind of stuff. Art. <laughs> uh, sorry, I did I just refer to my own videos as art? Um, <laughs> no, um, yeah, or, or like, um, you know, but it's, it's like, yeah, choose a home where people are going to respect the content that you <laughs> that you put up. Um, so yeah, definitely it's worth a shot. Um, Share.tube is, is where I'm residing, um, but there are, uh, there are others and they connect in quite nicely, so that's really cool. So anyway, on to the second part of what I wanted to talk to you about today, Steam Play. So I've got my uh, my Steam account up here. So yesterday, uh, or in fact, I think it might even have been earlier today, like just, uh, after midnight, um, Valve dropped some news uh, that has really taken the open source community by storm right about now. Or the te I think even the wider tech community are, are incredibly interested with, with this that um, Valve are developing a compatibility layer so that you can play Windows games uh, through the official 
uh, Steam launcher and Steam clients. They're building this compatibility layer using Wine DXVK, and apparently it turns out that they have actually been funneling significant amounts of money into DXVK, which explains why its development was, was so fast. Um, this is a complicated set of events because it, uh, it there are obviously a lot of um, Linux politics associated with when and how we use Wine and when and how we want to support people that choose to develop for Linux natively. And I think the general consensus is that at least among current Linux users, is that we're still going to be supporting native development, but we're going to. Uh, but but the fact that this makes Linux more attractive to more people is it's going to be a good thing, and this is a huge jump forward. It also like allows us to play, the, you know, the occasional game that we kind of you know want to. But um, but today actually, I've been uh, testing out how good and reliable this compatibility layer is, and I've got to say. For a beta, because like I say, it was released the same day, it, it, it's really good. It's really, really good. It doesn't have a 100% success rate. And I think that there are some cases where some games work on some hardware and other games work on other hardware. So what, are, what works for me and what I'm going to talk about what works for me today isn't necessarily going to be what works for you. So I'm running a, an AMD Ryzen with a NVIDIA 970 graphics card, which are generally pretty well supported. I'm running it on Manjaro, and that's particularly good because Arch-based distributions, uh, because they're rolling distributions, have fully up-to-date uh, drivers and uh, and software. If you're running an Ubuntu-based distribution, you have to install, uh, I think it's like a third-party PPA just to get the up-to-date drivers. Um, from what I have seen, that isn't a problem, but with um, Arch, all you've got to do is you go into your Steam settings, uh, and you have to uh, select that you're going to opt into Steam Beta, so you're going to get the Steam Beta version of the Steam client. And then you have to go into the settings again into in the Beta client just to select that you want to be able to play Windows games on Linux and that it is a Beta. So uh, the games that, uh, to be honest, I think out of my personal library, which is predominantly games before uh, 2012, um, it has about a 60 to 70% success rate, which is really quite good. There aren't that many games that half work. So um, Skyrim, for example, works, but uh, there is no dialogue, for example. Um, and there have been a few problems with sound on a couple of games. So for example, uh, with Hitman Codename 47, uh, it works perfectly, but there is no music. So these are um, minor things, which I, to be honest, expect to be worked out over the course of the time. You know, again, remember this is beta, so every time you see something that doesn't work, don't think that this is all doomed to fail. Um, the fact of the matter is this beta is very, 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 very promising, right? The problems that I see are solvable, and if so, so I'm fine with that. Um, the games that don't work, I got the list here. The ones, And this is, again, just for me, because I happen to know that although GTA 3 and GTA Vice City don't work for me on the official Steam client, they do work for me in Wine, uh, they have worked for other people in on that have been talking about it on Mastodon. So GTA 3 and Vice City, they don't work for me, but they do work for other people. So it might be a hardware issue. It might be that I just have to you know mess around with an INI file or something like that. Hitman Absolution. It's the one Hitman game that doesn't work. Um, not entirely sure why, but I don't even think I managed to get that working on Wine, but I'm not entirely certain. Monopoly is another one that doesn't work for me. Um, and actually, the fact that the, the, the Monopoly, uh, Oblivion, and Morrowind actually don't work. They sort of boot up, but then they sort of crash or hang or something early on. And that's actually quite interesting because all of these are games that actually, um, I, I haven't, Monopoly is for some reason I just installed it because I, I had it and I don't really mind, you know, that's just Monopoly. Um, Oblivion and Morrowind, they actually don't work even though they work really well on Wine. My gut behind why this is the case is, might have something to do between behind DXVK because when I play um, Oblivion and Morrowind, when I play them in Wine, uh, with my own wine client, with my own wine setup, uh, they work fine, but I don't use DXVK. So my, my, my hunch is that DXVK might be the culprit behind a few of these. I also tested APB Reloaded. I don't know if you're familiar with that. That's a free-to-play game. Uh, that has a lot of online stuff, so um, that is unlikely to work. In fact, APB Reloaded, uh, I remember being an absolute nightmare to get working on Linux. But I think that's about it for me. So GTA 3, GTA Vice City, Hitman Absolution, Monopoly, APB Reloaded, Oblivion, and Morrowind. I think for the most part. But the games that do work, so I've got here, 
Uh, I got Deus Ex uh, Game of the Year Edition, Invisible War. I've got Human Revolutions. It doesn't necessarily it doesn't run as well as it did on Windows, but again, I'm expecting this to to improve over time. Um, this is the Fall, a uh, Deus Ex: The Fall, considered the worst Deus Ex game. I got to say, I, I kind of got a bit of enjoyment out of it. It's, it's only about two hours long, I think, maybe three. Um, Deus Ex: Mankind Divided. I ended up installing that, completely forgetting that it was Linux native. Uh, Morrowind and Oblivion. Yeah, we talked about those. Those don't work. Uh, Fallout 3 works. Fallout Shelter works, which is a nice free-to-play game, so I might crack on with that at some point. Fallout New Vegas works. Um, with Fallout New Vegas, there is a mouse acceleration issue. Uh, when you're, you know, when you're using your mouse, if you move your mouse, it just the acceleration's a bit like uh, hyperactive. So there are a fair number of guides online that uh, can tell you how to turn off mouse acceleration, and then you've got perfect. Perfect performance there. Uh, uh, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, and uh, again, one of the reasons why I'm led to believe that some, you know, the discrepancies might have something to do with DXVK, is because uh, San Andreas works, but it uses a different graphical, uh, I think, it uses a different graphical engine or a higher version of DirectX or something in the, in that ballpark. So uh, there we go. Uh, Hitman TM is is native. Hitman Code 47 works, but without the music. Hitman 2 works perfectly. Contracts works perfectly. Contracts works really well, actually. It works. It's indistinguishable from native, if you ask, I think, and it even picks up the um, my um, 16 by 10 resolution. Blood Money works. Star Wars Battlefront 2, the 2005 version works. I was enjoying it earlier today. That's a really damn good game. I forgot how good that was. In fact, I think uh, years ago when I was playing it, I was playing it on the PlayStation 2. Uh, my word, is that a fun game? And the graphics. Have they updated the graphics or something like this? Because it looks, it, you know, that like, like those are good graphics. I mean, it's two thousand and five, so graphics weren't too bad back then. But that's a that's a nice looking game. Uh, runs like a dream. Lots of fun. And uh, I believe Star Wars Battlefront Two is on their list of games that they uh, they that they have um, you know geared this towards. There is a list of games that um, Valve say are supposed to you know that have been tested and are supposed to work with this new compatibility layer. I've not even had a look at this list. I've just been so hyperactive. I just jumped in and just tested what I've got in my library. Because to be honest, you know, coming back down to earth for a second here, as much as this feels like Christmas Day, I'm still going to be conscientious of the uh, politics of the situation and, and um, or conscious of the politics of the situation to be... Uh, and and I'm, I'm going to be supporting Linux developers first. I'm still a Linux first guy. Um, and I will only ever really use this compatibility layer to either play older games that I used to play when I had Windows, so I don't feel like I'm kind of losing out or I've left something behind by coming across the Linux. And I don't know, maybe there might be a game that comes out, like if, if Hitman, if the new Hitman game comes out and they don't do a win, you know, they don't do a Windows build, uh, they don't do a Linux build. I might have to convince, I might have to play it guys, you know how much I like Hitman, it's my, um, probably my favourite series really. Um, either that or Deus Ex, but to be honest, I still haven't finished Mankind Divided, so I think Hitman is really, uh, it's, it's fantastic. And I know a lot of people, particularly a lot of Linux gamers, don't like Hitman. And I know that these stealth games, uh, particularly the unforgiving, more difficult ones like Hitman, you know, they're a very um, acquired taste. They're very much for a, a they're very much for a, a niche genre. Um, but damn, I wish they were more, like more popular on Linux because I just kind of want, I want that game to be, you know, uh, but anyway. So yeah, um, when it comes to the PeerTube instances stuff, um, couldn't be happier. When it comes to this compatibility layer stuff, couldn't be happier. It's an absolutely glorious time to be in the open source community, to be a Linux user, and um, uh, yeah, and all that kind of stuff. Exciting, blooming times, and this is just the beginning of it. This is day one of the beta of the compatibility layer. PeerTube, still in beta. Lots more, um, you know, and with that funding, lots more development to go. My God, the future is bright. So anyway, guys, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna let you go now. Um, apologies for the rambles, but uh, yeah, um, I'm also gonna leave some videos. So I'm gonna do that thing where I stand to the side and maybe point. Uh, so what sh what should we do? I'll put some uh, some 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 more like Linuxy rambly videos up here, and I'll do the the non open source game reviews there, just so you know, it's that kind of stuff. Um, and um, yeah, oh sorry, I, I, I keep I keep drifting into it. So anyway, okay, anyway, I've been Chris Ware. You've been awesome. Take care now.